I have an enormous task before me. I pray that I live long enough to see it done. If my life were to end now, I fear I should die of failure. But my tale isn't yet fully told. And perhaps by the time it is, God willing, things will have turned around. I've lived the archetypal life of the poor artist, struggling, for the most part alone, unable to fit myself into what most people would consider a normal mould, a normal existence. I think I must have been an autistic child. I never understood what was happening around me. Everyone else seemed to know, without being told, what to do, how to behave. Life just swept me along in its inexorable flow. I completely lacked any social skills. My world, my existence it seemed, was entirely internal. I was always reading or drawing. I loved people, but I never felt like I was, myself, a person. I guess it'd be truer to say I loved and leave it at that. For throughout childhood, at least, that was my predominant feeling. And curiosity especially about the natural world. I collected seashells and other objects of natural curiosity. I loved science. Or, to be more specific, I loved learning about nature. Academically, I did well at school until I reached adolescence. Then a whole bunch of factors interacted in such a way as to lead me into depression. There was poltergeist phenomena in the house that I lived in. Bangs and knocks. Light switches being flicked on and off extremely rapidly all through the night. Chairs being scraped across the floor. And an ominous presence that always seemed to be watching me. Over time, I found myself drifting into deeper and deeper depression. I struggled with depression for most of my adult life, until I became a Christian. I must confess, I'm not a very good Christian. I don't go to church or read my Bible daily. I lust and envy, though, thankfully, I'm less angry than I used to be. Maybe I'm just getting too old to care. It shocks and sometimes scares me how quickly the years, the decades, have passed. So many unfulfilled dreams. So many conversations never had. Books never read. Roads never trod. Where will my road lead me to, if I follow it with courage? I'd love to finish Yatsira, to make of it what I imagine it could be. It haunts me to have done so much, having poured so much of myself into it, always with the intention and propelled by the belief that one day it would be seen and appreciated, not just by me, but by the whole world. It is my gift to the world. I only hope and pray that the world wants it. I believe we're all artists, and to each of us is given a canvas, not blank, to the contrary, marked and painted on, 
before we ever get to contribute our first brush stroke by our parents and the world into which we are born. I speak, of course, of our lives. These are the greatest canvases we shall ever be given. And what pictures shall we paint on them? What glorious visions of lives lived as none have ever been lived before. I've put this and all subsequent clips together to give you a glimpse, a tiny glimpse, into my life, my own great work of art, and to present to you a detail from that work, a detail I call yet zero. I do hope you like it. I'm trying to be less sensitive as I get older, but it's hard not to care about what others think. I used to feel that if you didn't like my art, you didn't like me. For I really do pour myself wholeheartedly, unreservedly into it. It is not, I used to believe, just an expression of how I think, how I perceive. It is, in a very real sense, me. If you don't get it, you can't get me. Well, as I said, I'm trying to get past that. But I do want my life, when it does end, to end well. Many folk stories talk of fairy lights. Travellers would see them and being footsore and hungry and believing an inn or a campfire was nearby, they would stray from their path, never to be seen by mortal eyes again. The consensus among the enlightened today is that fairy lights were really marsh fires caused by the spontaneous ignition of concentrated pockets of methane gas given off by the bacteria living in the poorly oxygenated waters of the marshes. Now, whilst I don't doubt the veracity of this explanation, I do not believe it tells the entire story. Tales of fairy lights, it seems to me, also carry a metaphoric meaning. They are symbols for the seductive and illusory promises that lead us in our lives away from the true paths we are meant to follow. The false lights that, like the siren songs, lead us to our doom. I must admit that in moments of what might just be mania, I believe Yet Zero to be not just a truly great work of art, but the single greatest work of art, not including architecture and film here, that has ever been created by human hand. Conversely, in moments of despair that may be, though hopefully are not, reality shocks. I see Yet Zero as another, perhaps the last in a long series of fairy lights that have led me further and further from my true path and have drawn me ever closer to my own doom. Thus far, my life has followed the archetypal pattern of the poor struggling artist a la Van Gogh. I pray with all my heart that in the future fortune or providence deals me another hand and that my cards this time will offer the blessings of a different archetype, that of the successful artist, Picasso or Warhol that my life might be the image of a greater archetype still, the 
from rags to riches archetype. For yet zero is something the like of which has never been done before. To see it properly requires a new way of seeing. 